All right, what's going on YouTube? Round of 64 for Hidden Cup for qualifiers. Fish versus Dark this time. Dark, one of the youngest Age of Empires players out there who are playing on a high level. A member of the Souls team, the mate of Winchester and Classic Pro. Versus Fish, a Vietnamese player that I know very, very little about. So I have, I'm, I'm going to be um, lying over here. The thing is that I don't know anything about this guy. So we're going to be flying in blind over here <clears throat> into this one. Uh, we will have Aztecs and Huns as global bands. We have Chinese, Byzantines, Persians, Portuguese, Franks and Berbers available for fish. Dark will be uh, having Italians, Malay, Lithuanians, Mayans, Saracens and Britons available after uh, fish sniped Vikings from him and Dark actually sniped Tatars from his opponent over here. Home maps will be Islands for Dark and uh, cross for uh, him as well, ban slopes, and bay and gold rush are fishes home maps, and he bans hideout. With that, we can jump into the first game over here, so welcome to Arabia. We will have um, Dark playing as Mayans over here on the south in Teal, and to the north it is going to be fish. Uh... Okay, I'm not sure why he's asking that at this point. Maybe they had some lags and they had to restore or something like that. I don't know exactly what happened here. But anyways, um, we are going to have uh, Fish playing in blue over here as Frank. So Franks or Smyans, a very, very standard uh, Dark Age or Dark Age. Very, very standard Arabia setup over here for both players. We are going to have a fish with a rather uh, unfortunate gold mine spawn. It's not really bad because it's at the back of the base. But it is uh, going to require you to wall a little bit more on the front than you would normally want to. The stone is also quite exposed. And overall, the right side of fish is very, very exposed. So I'm curious how he's going to wall. Bears on the front isn't ideal either for him. Other side, for dark, the bears are nice. Gold is workable if you wall yourself off like this, and it's definitely a wallable base for Dark. He has a secondary stone in the middle, or in the back, which can be extremely useful because his primary stone is pretty exposed. And we are going to see a Drush over here, in fact, that is a premium Drush coming in here from Dark. So, speaking of Dark, he's a very, very talented young player. So, the fact that he's already in the top 100 and even probably top 50 as well, um, and this young age, I think he's something like 15 or 16 years old, is absolutely outstanding. And in one or two years, we could potentially see another high level rising or high level player rising over here, especially considering his team members with Classic Pro and Winchester. So they practice a lot together, and we know how good Winchester is. So if he's able to kind of mentor and teach Dark over here, then uh, that Souls team is going to be extremely dangerous in team game events, for example. And obviously, Dark will also benefit from the mentorship of uh, a more experienced player like Winchester. But the raw talent is uh, definitely there for uh, Dark. We'll see what he can do against Fish over here. It's only two militias to drush with, um, somewhat surprisingly. And he's gonna go for some heavy, heavy voling. Uh, makes me wonder if we're seeing a Drush FC over here because he's already at 24 Voyagers. Honestly, you can justify a Drush FC against a Frankish player because the Frankish player is most likely going to play scouts and you can just wall behind. Obviously, um, he can add archers or skirms behind to try and get through your walls, but that's going to take some time. In fact, it is usually easier for the scouts player to just go for towers. Uh, if he wants to get into your base, but by the time those scouts really start having an effect on the game You can see that fish will probably be able to click up uh, To castle age if he's actually playing a drush fc and based on the fact that he's dropping farms He is indeed playing a drush fc. I like the fact that he only went for two militias Because he probably expected the scouts play from his opponent Which means that he probably knew that he's going to lose the militia and uh, in that case you are going to say, okay, I'm just going to, to play with two militias because all I want to achieve with these militias is distract my opponent, making sure that he's, you know, walling, quick walling and whatnot until I finish my walls. That rush is serving this purpose only, basically. If you can kill a villager or so or kill a huntable like that, that's definitely a benefit. But what you're actually using this for mainly is a distraction. And you see that the scouts are here. Now these walls are pretty far apart. So technically Fish could try getting through these walls. And the repair vultures would be very very far away at the back. But Dark already on the way to fuel over here. A little low on food to be honest. Uh, he didn't even push in all of his deer. This is not going to be a clean fast castle. Unless he does some 
heavy, heavy market trickery over here because he's very low on farms in this one. So he's at 427 food and he hasn't queued up Voyagers, I think. Um, he even has Loom, so it's not like he's just gonna go for uh, Loom and one villager so unless he's idling his tc uh considerably over here he's gonna have a tough time he actually misjudged the amount of farms he needs like if you're not pushing in all your deer you will probably need at least seven eight farms over here for this rush fc and i was a little sloppy over here from him and normally if this was a market play from him then he would just buy himself up no problem but this is um blacksmith range play and this is not a clean build from Dark over here, which I'm surprised about because as far as I know him, he's um, usually having clean build, so, so he usually isn't really having problems like this. Now that being said, it's not an awful lot of idle time that he's gonna have, but this 27 Voyagers, this would be a 27 Voyager timing by the way, so obviously with Mayans that's 28, but this is still uh, one of the faster Drush FCs. And it's a little tight build, and you see that he's going to be a little bit low on food for this one. Um, if he added two farms earlier um, with these food voyagers, then it could have been completely different. So he is going to have some idle time on him. Luckily for him, uh, it looks like Fish is also going to have a bit of an idle time on his TC, so that compensates a tiny bit. Still, I think that um, this about 20 seconds of TC idle time difference means that Dark has pretty much lost his extra voyager advantage from Mayans. However... He's gonna have a pretty decent push over here with his crossbows, and the two players are pretty close to each other, which means that uh, it doesn't take a lot of time for Dark to get those archers uh, into the base of his opponent over here. And you see that Fish will actually try walling himself in front over here. And in the meanwhile, um, the villagers on gold could also be exposed to a crossbowman aggression. So... This is actually a nice move from Fish, and this is why you usually don't like walling that far away, because the repair Voyager might have a tough time getting there by the time um, she needs to. Still, um, rewards will actually happen, and the archers will pop out on one side. So how many archers can you squeeze in here? You probably can get to something like 6, 7 with fletching. This is a very, very tight build, so 27 Voyager timing, even though you have one extra Voyager with Mayans. 27 Voyager timing, Drush FC usually does not have Botkin in it not necessarily because of the food eco it's probably going to be because of the gold eco so the gold is going to be a little too low for fish over here as you, or uh, for dark as you see and that means that uh he's not going to be able to get botkin in here for himself he's waiting with his archers over here until he's able to revo this one which is the smart thing to do you don't want to move out um to get intercepted by the scouts and ideally you start grabbing that crossbone upgrade like right now He's a little too low on gold still, cancels uh, one of the archers and goes for a crossbow, and now you start moving up indeed. Um, however, we have to keep in mind that Fish's castle time wasn't that bad either here, so the Frankish food eco is really helping out over here. In this one, the farms came in pretty early, and since you went for a scout's play, you will have a pretty pre well developed food eco, so he was able to adjust very fast, and he's only one and a half minutes behind, which is pretty impressive at this stage. That being said, that's a very, very long one and a half minutes, and even though he will be double stable knights in this one, if Dark is able to get a couple of Voyager picks over here, he could actually have a huge lead from this one. Now, Dark scouting is actually pretty poor, and he did lose his... Uh, eagle with the drush and that means that he doesn't know that the gold mine over here is exposed had he known this he would have gone over here and just pushed this side of the wall and that would have been a disaster for fish now it seems like by the time those crossbows will start getting anything uh done around here fish might be up to castle age already so this drush fc isn't really paying off so far for uh, dark he's getting more crossbows on the field as fish will try to get uh, those crossbows even more so delayed nice zigzagging over here and as i said i don't really know anything about fish but based on what we are seeing from him in terms of execution he seems like a fast player but this is a first for me i've never seen this guy in tournament before i have absolutely no clue who he is but Vietnam has a lot of very, very talented high-level players, so I'm not surprised that um, another one pops out um, from anonymity, sort of. Anyways, it's not ideal that you're chasing down uh, scur scouts with your crossbows, but more importantly, what Dark is trying to accomplish over here is uh, just 
assemble the army because he knows that knights will be coming and you don't you don't want um separate groups of crossbows against knights you want like one big army of uh crossbows second tc on the way for fish over, over here and the uh, second tc as well for dark now keep in mind that the mayan army is really really cheap and the fact that you are not really using your food to anything other than making voyagers pretty much means that uh your food eco will be converted into vultures and an imperial age basically anyways monastery on the way for uh, dark as well once they get a couple of conversions on those early knights the knights already have plus two defense here and the eco upgrades are actually very very good for uh, fish over here so he's got wheelbarrow he's got um boso he's got heavy plow so those eco upgrades are really there for him as a siege workshop will come in on this hill this is more like a map control like siege workshop so it's not really defensive not really offensive it's a middle of the map type of a thing and i also would like to point out that this scout has been scouting quite a lot for fish i don't know if this is an auto scout it could be because he's not using the other scouts he has for scouting and if this was a manually controlled scout um it would probably have friends looking for resources elsewhere and yeah the turns that these the scout is taking is uh very reminiscent of auto scouting but still at least you're using auto scouting to something right it's better to auto scout the map than it is to have uh, no vision around the map and then just you know be una unable to find key resources but fish using auto scouting over here and bringing in the first mangonel um the walls for dark are all reinforced in fact he has a very very well uh, reinforced walls over here and uh it seems like he stops making archers. I wonder if it's for ballistics or another TC. It's for another TC over here. Crossbows will take a decent fight over here. Pick off one knight. Might actually get another one over here. Miss the arrows. Dark isn't really forcing the ballistics upgrade right now. So he's probably playing... Well, not just probably. He's actually playing a more eco-focused approach. He's playing free TCs. His opponent will also be on free TCs. Dark now has a four Voyager's lead, but without wheelbarrow. So the two ecos are very, very close. And Fish is already on stone. And with Franks, you can actually drop a couple of cheap castles. So you really gotta wonder if uh, Fish, after this sort of passive ca early castle age, he's going to turn full aggro mode because you get two or three mangonels on the field with this many knights. You have the stone. You just unleash that and you just drop a castle here. And suddenly, Dark is dead. So, the thing is that if uh, Fish times this one well, he could really get a lot of value from this army here. Because the mangonels and knights combined, especially with those crossbows uh, being uh, outside of the base of Dark, hit a huge mangonel shot. That was enormous. And that's already a great start over there for Fish. Many of those crossbows are now damaged. You see that the average HP is about 60% only. And if Fish waited with this one just a little longer, then he could already be dropping a castle over here. That's the thing. That's why I said that I think if he waits a little more, this would already be a castle in construction over here in the face of his opponent. And he could really punish Dark over here. Now, Dark is also cornered within his own base over here as villagers are coming here to repair. And with Franks, you really don't need a lot of stone. You could even make a case for buying 100 so that you can get that castle up very fast. Because at this very moment, Fish is in a position to execute um, Dark over here. Because Dark is sitting behind his walls, but... This is one of the reasons why Franks can be scary in Arabia. That cheap castle can actually allow you to go for a very, very aggro play really suddenly. Just a couple of knights, mangonels pop out, and suddenly you appear with a castle in the opponent's face. And if that castle goes up, um, Dark will be on the back foot, that's for sure. Especially because Dark doesn't have this stone available. Um, he's gonna go for this stone mine, but that's obviously much, much smaller. One range already went down, so that will be in a need of replacement. And the stone is almost enough for fish. So let's see if he's going to pull the voyagers. He could definitely pull the voyagers now. He will uh, most likely take this hill over here with the mangonels. That would be the ideal spot. If he takes the hill with his mangonels, he will take that uh, arch range down even faster. And uh, as I said, the stone is there. As Dark is just re-rolling layer after layer. That castle could be up by now if he waits a little longer to push. And he could have waited... Um, still, it's not the end of the world, as now Dark will try to make a counterattack happen. As a um, little bit of a mango dancing over here. Fish really has some excellent unit control. Has quite a lot of TC idle time behind this one, but... I have to say that uh, for a player that I've never heard about, this is actually pretty good gameplay. So, um, he was either sort of retired for a long time, or just didn't play tournaments. 
I don't know what's up with this guy, but he's a talented player, so really, if anyone has information on him, I uh, sincerely thank you if you actually post it in the comments below, because uh, I would be curious who this guy is. Um, was he just retired, sort of, for some time, and he's just coming back to Age Vampires, and that's why I haven't heard his name? Or he's not playing in tournaments and just playing in some special lobbies or what? But he's absolutely slaughtering Dark over here, and Dark is not a bad player. In fact, Dark is a very, very talented player, but I think Dark played a little... Like, the thing is that Dark didn't play greedy here. Dark actually went for a lot of army. The problem that Dark is facing is that he's up against Franks, and Fish is using Franks to perfection against Mayas. He's doing exactly what he has to to beat Mayas in this game. And the thing is that Dark actually wants to imp this one. He will probably buy himself up and just go into Imperial, but the problem is that four minutes until Imperial is a long, long, long time. And I don't think... Uh, it's, it's not four minutes, it's three minutes, right? But Dark is about to go Imperial. Indeed, it's three minutes until imp and that's a long time especially because fish can almost afford a second castle now the thing is that this push may have stalled out for a small time and if dark gets to imperial then he's gonna be able to get our blast and our blast will destroy the mangonels and will destroy those knights as well and fish isn't actually in a position to click into imperial right now so this is not completely over yet but uh, right now dark is definitely on the back foot as the echoes are completely even still 218 left from uh the Imperial Age, and that, that's going to be a TC that goes down really fast over there to four Mangonels, shelling it from up hills. And you have to be careful with the crossbows here. If you lose your crossbows here, you are dead. So, you have to preserve those numbers and hope that your Imperial Age is going to translate into a lot of Arblasts. And the other thing that um, Dark could do, I feel like, is delete this farm and drop a castle here, because that would prevent any knights from running in here. In fact, um... Fish could definitely just send in his knights over here and start killing stuff uh, if he wanted to. Uh, instead, he's pushing this angle, which is somewhat understandable as well. One minute remaining for Dark, and he still has that TC, though. So, you really wonder if uh, Fish's push is actually fast enough. But look at that. He's on the way to Imperial himself. So, he isn't as much behind as I thought he would be. And he can afford another castle. And uh, if he actually dropped, I don't know... A castle here would actually be pretty nice on this hill because it would allow you to attack both of those gold mines. As there is the castle from Dark, he's gonna be beating his opponent to Imperial here, which means that he will have the trap advantage, but uh, the thing is that Fish could afford a second castle, and if he gets a second castle over there, then uh, he's gonna have 2 to 1 trap numbers regardless. Anyways, it looks like now the knights are uh, tempted to push in, and this is the moment of truth for Fish. He either commits now or he's gonna have to wait. I think he will try to use the mangonels because the mangonels will become obsolete once those are arbalests. As a mangonel pops out over here, that's gonna get killed pretty easily. And Dark reacting nicely goes for an immediate uh, trebuchet. The trap needs to pop out on this side, I think, so that it can trap down that castle. The queen gates are actually pretty helpful over here. For Dark. Dark is actually pretty low on upgrades though. He's got Bracer, but no Arbalest, no Chemistry. Uh, he does have the ranges, so I'm not sure why he's not getting Arbalest, but that would be a pretty important upgrade right now for him. As uh, we will have a TC coming up here for Dark that will eventually go denied by Fish. Fish is coming in here with the Knights, and that's going to be a lot of dead Voyagers potentially. And there is even a hole here, so technically those Knights could start slaughtering wheels really fast, and that castle is going to go up. Trap is out, but it's not firing yet. The trap is not firing, and that means that um, Fish is going to be able to keep that castle alive for uh, quite a long time. Now the pathfinding of those villagers. Oh, the pathfinding. They just run into the castle fire over here. Anyways, it looks like Dark will be rebuilding his buildings over here. And if this was... Um, you know... If this was Old Patch, we could see Obsidian Arrows. That's no longer an option over here as Dark will be marching out with all the Arborest he has, but that's a scary force of Cavalier, and I probably prefer 30 Cavalier with uh, plus 4 defense over 55 Arbs. That's just my personal preference, especially um, when the player with the Arbs is pretty much cornered in here, because Fish is going to lose this castle, and that's going to be a big counterattack. How big is this counterattack going to be? Fish has a lot of villagers over here that could be killed, but... 
He's still 30 villagers ahead, and more importantly, now these knights are flooding in. And as much as this army is good for killing units on, in Fish's base, this army is actually excellent for killing um, villagers inside Dark's base. And if these knights just run in here, they will kill like 30 villagers instantly. And Cavalier is in, and it seems like uh, Fish may have spotted this force heading towards his base, and that's why he's retreating. Or not. Meanwhile, we have Squires in here, so we are probably going to see a Halberdier switch from Dark, as we have uh, quite a lot of idle time being forced here by the Arbs, but those Arbs will not really be able to run away from the Cavalry here, and that's a lot of Cavalry coming in here with Blast Furnace. They even have some extra HP because they're Frankish Cavalry, and you could make, make a case for deleting these houses and running in with some of your Cavalier from this side and some from the other. Still... This force is likely to be destroyed, so the next question is how is the two or how the two players are going to follow this up. And uh, it seems like we're just going to see more orbs from Dark. Here's the big clash, a lumber camp, and everything is going to be the, that's actually the blocking path. And indeed, that is a massive. Massive, massive cleanup. The Mangonos are even patrolling here. They could have just brought in here and, you know, take a one shot and you kill all those Arbs. Now, Dark is down to a very, very low military count. 15 Arb Blast. He's tacking into Pikeman, but that feels too late. And also keep in mind that Franks are extremely good at adapting to the Pikeman switch because they have a very, very easy and clean transition to throwing Axemen. So, cheap castles means that you can actually produce throwing Axemen relatively easily. Um, they also train relatively fast. They are using the infantry attack upgrade line, which means that um, when you have good cavalry, you already have the attack upgrades in for your throwing axemen. So all you need to deck into is um, elite, the infantry armor upgrades, and uh, bird decks. So it is a very, very clean transition. And uh, honestly, I don't think it's going to matter in this case because it's free traps. One of them, I think, is firing down hills. And it is 14 army against 30, and uh, for a player that I've never heard about, this is actually very, very good from Fish. And overall, he played really well here, so the more I'm looking at this guy, the more curious I am on who exactly he is, because um, this has been impressive. This is some high-level gameplay over here that he has uh, put in here, and as I said, Dark, he has been doing decently in medium-sized tournaments. As I said, he's young and he's very, very raw as a talent. But overall, he's a good player, and uh, he's probably the most improved player of recent memory as well. So the fact that Fish is, um, I'm not going to say stomping him, but Fish played aggressive here, and he was able to punish uh, Dark for, uh, for basically sitting behind his walls, I would say. Or I should also say that uh, maybe punish Dark for um, the free TC boom that he has had. It's hard to say, because I think Dark did the right thing, but... Fish just played his civilization very, very well against the civilization of the opponent. That's the thing. So Fish realized, okay, I can actually push this one in Castle Age with Mangonels and Knights, and I can drop a cast in the face of the opponent. And that was the absolutely right decision here. So the decision making was on point from Fish over here. And that leaves us with Arabia in the hands of uh, Fish. Franks are gone for him. It's actually a late Frank speak over here. Oftentimes, Franks are even banned or sniped. So it's surprising that Fish was allowed to grab that that late. Other side Mayans will be gone for Dark. And we are uh, going to take a look at the next game in this one, which is the first home map of uh, Dark over here, and that is Islands. So we're going to Islands. All players from Salts apparently love playing Islands, and they are very, very good at it. So... Classic Pro, Winchester, and Dark as well, or like really like uh, Islands. Yes, we're going to have Italians for uh, Dark on the left side in Teal. Right side is going to be Portuguese for Fish in uh, Blue. The thing is that I like Portuguese here a little bit more. I think it's a very, very underrated water civilization. Cheaper gold cost on the units, um, higher HP on the ships. Fatoria is available for very, very, very long games. Um, whereas Italians will have the cheaper fishing ships and cheaper water attacks. But I feel like Italians is more of the sieve that gives you a very, very nice early advantage on water. But in the long run, Portuguese is much, much better. So uh, late game, 
I massively favor Portuguese over Italians over here. So looking at the maps, I think the two players have relatively similar islands over here um, in terms of how safe the resources are. So um, this gold mine is absolutely awful for Dark, but this one is also pretty bad uh, for Fish over here. Dark is actually very unlucky with this gold. This is way worse than what Fish has over here. This one isn't great either, but this is absolutely awful. So it's in the middle of nowhere and it's easily deniable from the water and that's not, not something that you ever want to see. Anyways, Fugal Age is uh, coming in for both players over here. Stones are safe um, for uh, Dark and uh, more or less safe as well for Fish. I think the two maps are still rather similar. Um, it's a matter of this gold mine that's concerning for Dark. Anyways. We are going to have Fire Galleys from Triple Docks over here from Dark. And in the meanwhile, we only have the second Dock coming in here for Fish right now. So it seems like he's going to have a little bit of a trouble over here in terms of uh, getting some ships out. Which um, for a player that is named Fish is um, somewhat uncommon, I would say. Anyways, um, it's only two Docks versus three Docks. So the start was actually much, much better for Dark. And one of the things that you get, as I said Another early benefit from Italians is that um, you're able to go up to feudal a little bit earlier because the age up is cheaper. So the next question now is if Dark is going to find those docks though. Because one thing that you should do here in this case is send one fire guy to the right, one to the left. Because you have to find those docks as fast as possible. And it seems like Dark is actually going the wrong way. Which is helping fish quite a lot. Just, you know, keeping his fish in ships alive. So this is not something that you should do if you're Dark. You should split your um, fire galleys because the idea is that you have to find the opponent's dock as fast as possible. Once you find the opponent, obviously you will be outnumbered. But uh, you can just send your fire galley back over here and repair it. It is more important to find the opponent fast than actually, you know, grouping up two of your fire galleys early. And look at that, that's beautiful from Fish once again. This guy is a beast. Who is this? Like, the more I'm looking at this guy, this guy's actually playing well. Like, and when I'm saying well, I, I really mean it. It's not just like um, he's playing good. He's really, really playing well. Has some very nice moves like blocking fishing ships with fire galleys over here. And right now it's five fire guys versus five as well. Remember, these guys have a little bit more HP, a 10% extra hops quite significantly for Portuguese. And the fact that Dark didn't find those um, docks in time means that um, Fish was able to catch up in terms of... Uh, Firing alley numbers. Now, there is quite a lot of weak fire guys over here for fish, but I think there is demos queued up behind this. Both players do have their fishing eco still intact, with the exception of one fishing ship that uh, Dark has lost. So, Dark is on three and uh, fish is on four. But fish actually is behind in by about half a Voyager or so. Nice splits over there from Dark, splitting up the fire galleys to attack the dog from different angles. Still, I don't think that fish is going to allow him to get that dog down. Indeed, now the counter-attack is going to come in. Demos are on the way from Dark, though, and one well-placed demo could turn things around here for him. Nice demo shot over there. Damages uh, to maybe even three ships overall. And, uh, well, that guy and that woman actually wanted to do something on the shoreline, but that wasn't uh, related to repairing ships. Beautiful demo hits from Fish over there, though. And in the meanwhile, that is going to be a pretty decent one as well from Dark. Sinks one fishing ship as well. And the damage is another one. Still, it is six fire guys versus six fire galleys. As Dark actually brings in a villager much closer to repair. A demo pops out. This actually is the choke point of death over here. Because there is so many demos coming in here. And that is another excellent demo from Fish. Really? He's playing so well. And I'm impressed. Like... I will have to look this guy up after this series, because uh, when I was looking at this, I was like, okay, um, he's a solid Vietnamese player, it's alright, but he's playing way better than that, like, he's actually playing extremely good so far, very, very little mistakes um, that I'm noticing from him. So the decision making seems to be a point, and the execution is also pretty nice, so it's 13 kills to 4 deaths. Dark could get absolutely destroyed here in this series, and I think... That would sort of be a surprise, because as I said, this is the first time I'm hearing Fish's name. So he's not really playing a lot of tournaments, and Dark has quite a lot of tournament experience here. And so that is going to be a demo that's um, sort of okay-ish over there for Dark. Tries to get another connection. And maybe he could... Oh, that was a beautiful demo from Dark, though. And suddenly, Dark actually 
is uh, back on water, sort of. Even more importantly, Italians for you, my man. He actually went up and I think he sold 100 stone. Because he ma made two outposts, that's 10 stone, and he sold 100. So, I think Fisher is planning to do the same thing, sell 200 stone and go up. But, um... Dark is going to have the upper hand when it comes to Castlish timing and the fire ships eventually is going to be helpful overall. Ecos are still very, very close um, for both players. Fish still has three fishing ships, whereas Dark only has uh, one, I believe. Also, do you guys know what the difference is between Fish and Dark in this game? Fish has fishing ships. Dark has no darking ships. I, ha I had to. I had to. <laughs> uh, apologies for that. Now, that actually could be an enormous demo hit if it actually connects. Demo still has a lot of HP here. And it is going to trade off over here to another demo. So, it wasn't perfect for Dark. The problem that Dark is facing is that, yeah, he's going to be up to Castle Age. But he's right now sitting on free fire galleys. And that could be a nice demo hit over there, though. So, the free fire galleys um, that are actually not attacking, apparently are um, now just history and that means that dark is uh, gonna be unable to get anything out of his castle here like absolutely anything so demo could pop out and he's trying to sink this fleet as best as he can doing some damage but not even remotely close to compensate for the fact that he lost his entire fleet now what he could still do is try to just you know use that castle to uh, mess a couple of fire ships inside his docks and uh, hope that he can actually use the quality of those units against fish because fish is just going up to castlage so um dark still has all oh, dark he actually saved his fishing equipment. i didn't see that and now this might actually go spotted or not fish is ignoring that fishing ship uh, group over here and i don't like the fact that dark is actually unpopping his fire ships here that shouldn't have been a thing he needs to mass like five or six of them to be efficient here otherwise uh, they are going to be more than troublesome now it seems like he's getting those out still and fish is still one and a half minutes away from castle age here so things could still turn around on water thanks to those fire ships and as i said uh, in the long run i prefer portuguese but early game for more aggressive strategies italians are actually better than now fish is just trying to save his navy over here i think fire ships are also a little bit faster than fire galleys are so it is possible for them to catch up and that's actually would be a smart move from dark to split his fleet over here send a couple of ships over here in this direction to remove that uh, fishing eco over there and uh, for dark he also needs to notice that hey my fish ships are over here and i don't really want to lose them so what if I uh, just send them to the corner? But once again, fish turns back. So these fishing ships are very, very close to actually dying. But they won't. They won't. And in the meanwhile, fish is actually doing a nice job saving his own fishing eco here. A TC comes in here from dark to protect that gold mine. That's going to be decent as long as there is no war galleys on the field. There is war galley, though, from fish. Let's see if there is a demo or not. It is right now 11 fire ships against 12 fire galleys, so the fire ship numbers will be relatively even once uh, fish gets into the war galley technology. And uh, then it's once again going to be fire galley versus fire ship versus fire ship and demos. Careening comes in quite early for uh, fish, which makes me wonder if you're seeing a landing or is just for extra pierce armor because he's getting prepared to um, fight against war galleys. That's enormous demos over there. Like, they were even chilling there for half a minute, but those were still huge demos coming in for Dark. And now it's 14 ships against 11. More importantly, many of these ships over here are awfully weak. Fire ship versus fire ship fights over here on the left, and they will trade rather evenly. Reinforcements are on the way. Fish only has uh, 1, 2, 3, 4 docks, I believe. Other side, uh, we have a lot more docks. Uh, 2, 4, 5. Um... I can actually just look at it. F yeah, five docks versus four docks. So it's not a lot more, but it's a little bit of an advantage over here for Dark. And for now, these fishing ships will survive. Some demo will try to chase them. It would be important for do fish to preserve these ships because a lot of them are very low in HP. And I think this demo is going to catch them, though. Or not. They just pass each other. They just pass each other. Still, 
The ship numbers are relatively close over here, so basically one or two good demos can win the game, or well, not win the game, but uh, win the battle for either player, as we had some rather inefficient demo hits over here, as this fire ship is just trying to clean up these weak ones. Still 12 against 11, we had some big demo hits over here, and it seems like fish is coming out of that one as victorious. You can say that the efficiency of uh, his demos were a little bit better. Um, as I'm saying that, that's gonna be another nice attempt, but that was a nice split from Dark and ends up being an inefficient demo, but it's now 9 fire ships against 7. And it looks like those fire ships from uh, Dark are trying to intercept reinforcements right now. But it's only, as I said, six ships over here, 300 HP combined. Whereas you have 447 for these ships over here. So slowly fish is taking over the water. And as I said, the longer the game goes, the better the Portuguese will become on this map. So soon the extra HP on the ships will actually start to matter. The fact that you have to invest less into the Navy because uh, they're just cheaper helps immensely. Whereas for Italians, you're slowly running out of the bonuses that uh, make you a strong water save. Especially at the beginning of the game. Obviously, late game Italians is still rather strong on water. But I probably prefer Portuguese over that. Anyways, Dark is already making monks to pick up relics. He's on two TCs. And the one thing that we didn't notice is that indeed, um, Fish will just drop his second town center here. And even though he is controlling the water, he's behind by 11 villagers. However, we have to keep in mind that the food eco for fish is a lot more developed, which means, and part of it actually comes from fishing ships that are still alive, so a more developed food eco means that he could think about Imperial Age a little earlier than his opponent does, like Dark is barely able to keep his theses working, in fact he's now going for free theses over here, some more demos on the way. So military number is still very very close, could be anyone's game on the water, I think the real question is, uh, going to be Fish's progression towards um, Imperial Age because he's definitely progressing towards that and 2DC Imperial in such a scenario I think would be perfectly acceptable for him. Obviously his eco is going to be weaker than the opponent's eco but as I said he has cheaper units and the power spike of Imperial Age could be pretty enormous for him even though he's now falling behind a little bit in terms of fire ship numbers that's a nice demo hit over there from Dark. Now fire ships come in from the other side as well. Another demo could actually connect and it does connect. Fish has been taking some pretty bad beatings on his uh, ships now with uh, the demos. That's another demo. Nice splits over there from Fish and ends up being an okay uh, blast and that is another okay blast over there from uh, the demos of Dark. Fish is taking a little bit more inefficient uh, demo hits over here but still He's winning on water. He's 14 ships against 6. And as I said, uh, for 2 TCs, you have a 12 on food. That's basically what you need to make that work, make that 2 TC working. Whereas uh, for Dark, he doesn't actually have the food eco to keep all 3 TCs working, that's for sure. And now those docks are going down really, really fast over here. Dark has to redog, but that's going to be an expensive thing for him. As uh, it seems like um, we're going to have a couple of demos moving in here. Beautiful demo hit from Fish once again. Dark is... Dark is having an even KD compared to his opponent at the end of the day, but these blasts seem pretty big from both sides. To be honest, another huge demo hit. So many demo hits in this game that are just ending up being enormous. Another one over here. So that's why this is an even trade. Both players are just eating enormous demo hits on their fleets. And the water is kind of going back and forth over here between the players, depending on who gets a huge demo shot um, in the preceding moment. And that could be another big demo shot. Indeed it is. And it seems like Dark is holding this one without losing a single dock. He's pulling a lot of voyagers to repair those docks. And there's another demo that is coming in here. And that could also sink a lot of ships. Oh, that was... That was another huge blast. Holy smokes, how many demo hits are we having here? I think, like, probably 80% of the ships sunk in this game were sunk by demos and not fire ships. So... Let's take a look at the Ecos. Both players are still just full-on grind mode in this uh, Castle Age Naval Warfare. Um, we have 88 Voyagers for uh, Dark, 72 for Fish. But Fish kind of has uh, no expansion in Food Eco. And that means that uh, he's still kind of nowhere close to being up to Imperial, whereas his opponent has actually expanded his Food Eco a lot more. So 21 now on Food. 
and also a lot on gold so you can actually buy a little bit of a food for yourself which um, with the italian bonus going up into imperial a little bit cheaper um, will help you potentially click into imperial in the next one or two minutes once again darks numbers on water are pretty low so it's six five ships now against 17 however he has been connecting with a lot of demos and there is a good chance that he will be able to sink a lot of the ships from uh, fish over here using demos still his plan is probably to go into imperial here and go for fast fires and fast fires will just wreck everything that castlage can give you nice demo once again so yeah, i think dark is gonna have to hold out here with demos he's also relatively close to dropping a castle which i believe that um, if he's losing his dogs he's going to drop a castle so that he protects his dogs with that if he feels like he can actually keep his dogs alive with demos for example he might save that stone and maybe wait until um, he actually takes control over the water in imperial and maybe even just go for a landing and drop a castle here or a safer way to play that one would be to secure this neutral island with the castle now those docks are going down really fast and the only plea that um dark has is three demos and one fire ship so i feel like he's in the massive need of actually dropping a castle to protect his docks because the thing is that he's losing water and remember that his gold mine on the left here is something that can be denied by war galleys so if fish add a couple of war galleys here he would be able to start absolutely smashing these in fact Fish, if he had a couple of war galleys, he would be denying this wood line, he would be denying the stone. I'm not sure what um, Dark is doing, but uh, he will soon have to think about redocking this one. He's got the stone for that, and there is the castle coming in. I think that Fish could have actually transitioned to war galley at some point, now that he's having a pretty dominant water control. It's 23 army compared to 2. So if he actually mixed in a couple of war galleys here, he would be able to potentially deny that castle. So... Yeah, one of the things that he could be having problems with is that his fire ships will soon be problematic in terms of coastline denial. And he wasn't really able to capitalize on the water control. If he had a couple of war galleys, he doesn't even need a lot. He could have actually harassed voyagers from this side. He could have harassed voyagers over here. Now, new docks are coming in here for uh, Doric. Uh, yes, he's gonna get a pretty enormous blast over here or the demo is just going to freak out. That demo could have been a lot bigger. It could have sunk like five ships or so. Uh, once again, demo being a little bit inefficient over here. But uh, Dark is up. And that means that Fast Fire Ship has to come in for him. Uh, here is Fast Fire indeed on the way. The problem is that he doesn't really have the numbers. And because he doesn't really have the numbers, um, this is giving a lot of time for Fish to react to this one. And you see that Fish is going to buy himself up as well. Here are the war guys that I was asking for. And all you need to do is just take those war galleys. Um, first of all, research Fletching and Botkin, otherwise they're going to be pretty much useless. And uh, just camp on the gold. Or alternatively, you can just use the fire ships to absolutely melt that TC. Look at this. Now, the thing is that TC has to focus on the war galleys, because the war galleys are the ones denying the repairs. But the fire ships are just melting the building here, man. Absolutely stunning. And as I said, congratulations, Dark is up to Imperial, but he's going to have one fast fire ship over here. Obviously, those numbers will increase pretty soon, and they train really rapidly as well. That could still be a problem for uh, Fish. But uh, I think what Fish has to do here is potentially get a couple of demos himself. Now, Vorgalis without attack upgrades will not actually help you here. So, no thank you. I mean, even Vorgalis with bot game will not really even be able to scratch the fast fires of dark and i think dark did what he had to he was losing water so he was um, starting to build up on the fast fire power spike and that is a huge power spike that you're able to use and what fish has to react to first of all he drops a castle and that means that he's going to be able to protect these dogs over here but fish needs demos here because um one way to slow down a fast fire uh play here from your opponent if you are waiting for your own imperial is by uh, getting a couple of demos out there fish is also really long gold for whatever reason uh, he just ran out of one of his gold mines i believe but he only has five voyagers on gold which is very very questionable to be honest he's got 43 on wood so don't tell me that he can't send more voyagers to gold but he's obviously low on gold what is happening to fish it seems like he's actually having uh, a tough time microing his units at the same time and having a good macro behind this one careening and the ship right on the way for a dark and there's already a transport i wonder where that castle is coming up at because those voyagers are going for a castle now you could actually make a case 
or castling the opponent's island as well, although it is a safer play that you just castle this one and play for the fact that you have neutral resources available and your opponent does not fish almost up to Imperial. And um, as I said, why is he only having 8 villagers on gold? I don't understand that. So he's up to him. He's gonna get um, Dry Dock immediately. He actually prioritizes that over Fast Fires. And it looks like a transport is actually going for this island. The other island will be claimed by uh, fish here. So, oh, oh, the demo, the demo could have sung this entire thing. The demo. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is going to be a moment that's going to be remembered. If this was Twitch, it would be clipped. That was huge. That was so, so huge. I was waiting for that to pop. I was like, maybe it can sink the transport with units inside, but no. It actually sank the entire landing operation. So, what now for um, Fish? He's still not getting fast fires. So, it, he wants to transition into what appears to be Galleon, but it's going to take quite a lot of time until he can do that. And his opponent is already getting there, so... In fact, it might be Caravals, even. Heavy demo is now on the way for uh, Fish. I think that's the right decision to make. Um, just get a couple of demos, get heavy demos, and one way to sink fire ships would be heavy demos. That's a lot of fast fires, by the way. As another detachment of uh, voyagers will attempt landing on this island, I think that uh, Fish could already start making traps here, because he could start trapping down those docks, and uh, in the meanwhile, his fishing eco is going to get uh, absolutely wrecked. Now he sends more voyagers to gold. So, heavy demos on the way. Right now, it's 44 military against 24. But as I said, you could set up traps over here, start taking out the docks, and we also have to consider that those fast fires look intimidating, but once they encounter the heavy demos, suddenly things will start turning around. Botkin just now for uh, fish though. You really wonder if he should have gone for heavy demos him or um, heavy fires. Wow, fast fires. Nah. Yeah, it's not heavy fires, it's fast fires himself. And that was some very, very inefficient demo hits over there from... Uh, fish i would dare to say that those were awful and now he's out of demo ships over here when there is still a huge amount of ships to deal with uh, nice hit over there but not perfect and uh, really you are actually very very low on docks now if you are uh, fish you have six docks as opposed to 10 of your opponent and those docks are melting really hard so fast fires actually pack a significant punch over there and as i said i feel like this transition to war galley or gallium was a little too early because uh at the end of the day, those uh, fast fires are just racking you, absolutely. And I mean, eventually, I think this is gonna be... Look at this Galleon, but that Galleon is so, so slow from fish over here. And there is no f other demos being produced here. That's what I'm surprised at. So, as much as I was praising the macro of fish in the previous game, and uh, even the early to mid game in this one, this is kind of potato from him right now. Because he needs like a massive amount of uh, heavy demos to deal with that fleet. Free traps being set up over here by Dark, and uh, that means that he's going to shut that castle to death, and now it's going to be Galleons, and his opponent was able to tech into Galleons a lot easier um, because of Italians. With Portuguese, you could make a case for the extra Pierce armor with the Karak upgrade. Demo is actually going to take a blast over here, tries to take down the traps, but all traps are still alive. The other castle is going to be important as well. But the all four traps are still alive. You could really make a case for trying to at least take down one or two of them. Many of them are weak. So you could just bring in the galleons, try to snap one or two. But that castle is going to go down. Look at this voyagers being burnt alive over here. As Dark is actually getting masonry for himself. Just to make sure that he actually keeps that up. Uh, or that keeps the castle up. Uh, a big demo shot over here sinking a lot of ships. That's what um, Dark needed more. As he's trying to get Karak over here on this castle before it goes down. But there is no way. There is four traps shelling it. And it's 50 ships. And no longer can you actually come back into this game with demos. The opportunity for that is gone. Because now your opponent has completely tacked into a galleons. He already has heated shot as well. Trap is already shelling these castles and the next landing from Dark will be already on the side of the opponent and one of the things that Italians can do really well here is Condottieri, a defensive castle coming in here from Fish. And the condos will be extremely good demos trying to go for a suicide mission over here and actually taking quite good hits against those galleons over there. So Condottieri don't really need a lot of upgrades to be efficient and uh, these voyagers will just get killed very very easily so even just a couple of condos running into the opponent's eco is going to start causing a lot of headache for fish over here voyager count is still relatively even 
Uh, but what is worth noting is that the neutral islands are right now in the hands of Dark, and I think Dark also stole the relic. Uh, he's right now sitting on two relics. Uh, I don't know who has the final ones. It's one relic for fish, two for Dark. But look at this eco for fish. Three and a half hours of idle time. And I'm not sure if this is just, you know, maybe maybe he just misclicked his voyagers or something like had that happened. But now his voyager idle time is absolutely crazy. Ship numbers are equalizing, but as I said, um, Kandatieri will be coming out here for Dark. And the thing is that, guess what? Kandatieri is an anti-gunpowder unit primarily. So against organ guns, Kandos are very, very good because Kandos are good against everything that is uh, a gunpowder unit. Now, once again, it looks like... Um, Fish will try to suicide in the demos over here. Uh, ends up trading them off most likely for the um, fire ships. As we have another transport coming in here. Remember that the clock is ticking for Fish. In fact, he's running out of the gold on his own island. He's still floating 1400. So he still has some time to reclaim the islands. But he desperately needs to get some islands for himself. Otherwise, he will just be outlasted by the opponent. Um, Dark over here. Fish could also make a couple of Phaetorias right now. For the sake of, uh, you know, slowly getting a trickle of resources in here for himself. Right now it is um, 20 galleons against 28. There is some fast fire support though from Dark. As, uh, as I said, if Dark starts making condos here, he could start making the life of uh, fish even ha harder. There is the castle attempted here. I think if this castle goes up, I see little chance for uh, fish to come back into this game. And that would be an even um, set. It looks like um, Dark is just mass selling food for gold. I think he's a little bit concerned that he may still lose water. And that's why he's just mass selling food instead of actually making uh, the Condottieri here. He's just selling his food um, for some gold so he can actually field more ships. He doesn't want to sell his wood because wood is going to be extremely important in the long run. That's the thing. Um, when the islands start running out of wood, that wood is going to be extremely precious. And this is why he's not selling it. He's just stockpiling wood. And he's selling stone, he's selling food, because those are less important. We're gonna have Capdrams coming in here for fish, I assume. The idea is that he's trying to draw away the um, Galleon fire from the opponent. Still, fish actually has the bigger fleet over here, and he's driving that castle down over there. But every moment that Dark is having on those islands with the extra gold could be huge. And uh, fish, imagine if he actually went for Phaetorias, because we're getting to a very, very late stage of the game once again. And Phaetorias could really start shining um, in this moment now. That's a little bit sloppy from Fish, though. He could lose that trap over there to the fast fires, and he's not reacting to that one. And the castle is still standing. Oh, boy, that actually is a disaster for Fish. He's losing one trap, and he could lose the other trap as well. And what a hold. What a hold from Dark. And remember that he's got heated shot on that castle, so that castle is actually dealing a lot of damage to ships over here. And despite the fact that Dark has the weaker fleet right now, it is just 28 mute against 46. And 20 galleons and fa 3 fast fares against 35 galleons and uh, a couple of heavy demos. The problem that Fish is facing is that he's unable to just remove Dark from the middle. And as I said, Fish now is out of gold. So, without Phaetorias, um, without gold accessible to mine, he's going to be slowly grinded down. I don't think that he has a dominant enough fleet to be able to take these islands anymore with those castles up it looks like oh he's actually sinking a lot of ships over here but even if he does that he needs those uh, islands asap because he doesn't have gold whereas his opponent does and now fish is selling a lot of wood over here um as dark instead is selling stone i really like dark's position over here now as he's starting to harass the only remaining wood line of fish fish is running out of resources here so is dark by the way these galleons are harassing him but Dark has the extra resources in the middle, and Dark also has three relics inside his monastery, whereas Fish never picked up his second relic even. Where is that second relic at? I have absolutely no idea. There is a monk somewhere. But I have no idea where the second relic is at from Fish's island. I have absolutely no idea, but this is not something that you would like to see. Um, in your eco. Just Voyager is idle. And the thing is that, as I said, if Dark can just sit on these islands, he's going to grind out the game. Funnily enough, in a very, very long game, if you had Phaetorias for fish, he would be able to just outlast his opponent over here because Phaetorias would give you infinite resources, basically, over time. But he never went for a single Phaetoria, and that's going to hurt him. One of the reasons why Portuguese are very, very good in these 1v1 Islands games is because 
if the game goes extremely long, the Feitorias can actually help you outlast your opponent. Anyways, at this point, there is no more stone left in the bank for Pish, and despite the fact that he has the score lead, he's in an awful spot. He is even military compared to his opponent, a lot of heavy demos, he just wants to have like one huge run at sinking all that fleet, but I think that's already coming too late, because even if he sinks that fleet, he is not in a position to actually contest these castles, and uh, because of that, and we, we might even see these voyagers landing here to start chopping trees, exactly. When the resources are landing this scarce, you can actually land with your voyagers and start chopping trees here. You have to send a couple of galleons in here, and look, look at that. How many voyagers is that? I can't even select all of them, so it's 60 plus voyagers over there for fish. His entire eco. Now here come the heavy demos uh, over here. Still, as I said, even if they somehow sink this entire fleet from uh, Dark, which actually is uh, technically possible with all those demo hits over there, so, Dark is down to 15 military. Dark is able to replenish his fleet, and uh, guess what? Fish isn't. So, Fish still has a lot of uh, galleons coming from the left side, but that doesn't change the fact that he's not in a position to contest these castles, and that means that Dark is just gonna have more resources. Also, Dark has three lakes over two from his opponent, and since there is no Fightorius from the uh, Portuguese player, that means that from every measurable statistics here, um, Dark is gonna be able to outlast his opponent in terms of resources, and under no circumstance will Fish be able to do anything to come back in this game. So, indeed, he taps out, and the Dark coming back to islands over here, but this was also scary for Dark in many, many instances. I feel like if Fish doesn't go for uh, an immediate galleon switch, and goes for his own fire ships instead, I think Portuguese should have fast fires, right? I'm not 100% sure about that. But if Portuguese do not have a fast fires, then that should have been an earlier war galley transition. Because you know that you're getting close to Imperial. Yeah, they don't have fast fires. I see now that actually makes life a lot harder. But in that case, it should have been uh, a lot more demos early on instead of trying to force the galleons. And also, if that's the case, you also have to be prepared for your opponent switching into fast fires. So you kind of have to start decking into War Galley, especially as you start winning the water. And that's not something that Fish has uh, done, and that means that he eventually um, just got outlasted on water, because, as I said many, many times, um, on islands, whoever controls the middle islands is going to win the game. Dark wins game number one, and that means that Fish will bring us to either Bay or a Gold Rush, as one of his home maps. So, the next one over here... is apparently Bay. So, we are gonna get going in this one. Um, let's jump into the game. So, welcome to Pants or Bay. We're gonna have Dark playing in uh, Teal on the left side as uh, Malay. And other side will be Fish playing as Byzantines. So, two very, very slow but strong armies that we're looking at. Um, Byzantines are a little bit more in early Imperial Age Power Spike based, but they could also play with Towers potentially um, if they want to. So, forward strategies are also absolutely viable for um, the Byzantine player, whereas Malay is more of the stronger eco approach a tiny bit, but also very very good at generally exploiting power spikes with the faster um, age up. So one of the things that Malay give you on this map is that you can get up to feudal age very very fast um, with Malay and the relatively strong eco, and that allows you to contest the pond really early on. On the other hand, what Byzantines give you is a very very strong fire galley. Byzantine fire galleys are super underrated. Um, in the aspect that um, they deal a lot more damage than standard fire galleys. Anyways, here is the dock coming in here from a Fish. Dark is trying to snipe that Voyager, and uh, he will give up on it. So, there was no Voyager sniped over there. Same thing on the other side, so both players will keep their docking Voyager, although it is a little bit sloppy from both sides that uh, they did not really protect that docking Voyager whatsoever. Anyways, as you see, Loom is already coming in here for Dark, and he is going up, and that's the Malay power over here. He's clicking up with two Voyagers more, and he's reaching Feudal 20 seconds faster than his opponent does. 
that's the real melee power that we're facing over here. I did slow down the game already, so Fire Galleys should be coming out in a matter of moments for uh, both players. Anyways, uh, we're gonna have a second dock up here for fish as well. So this is tricky. You have earlier Fire Galleys if you are dark, but the quality of those Fire Galleys will be much, much better um, for fish over here. So that's going to be interesting to take a look at. And also, um, Fish was able to take a very, very decent engagement against the opponent's scout over here. I assume that the Dark may have been idle or something like that. I don't know what happened there because the scout is nearly untouched and this one is actually heavily damaged. One of the things that could have happened is maybe running into TC fire. Did that happen? No, it didn't. I really don't know how. Oh, look at that. Look at Dark. As I said, he's a very, very young and talented player. Reminds me a lot to, like, I don't know. I have a feeling that if he keeps improving the way that he did, he could be the next Leary in, uh, I don't know, two years or so. So, look at that. He's already going for these. Okay, I'm gonna trap your scout in there. And that's actually extremely important because he keeps his own scout alive. And uh, kills the opponent's scout. So, he denies information from his opponent. Yet, he's able to keep his own information source alive. And now, he... This, just splits up his uh, fire galleys over here. You already have only two fishing ships for uh, fish overall, so you can say that he's not really committing a lot to fishing. And the dark tries to snipe off the fishing ships as fast as possible over here. Now takes the engagement, and um, the ships aren't really firing back here for fish, and that means that um, this is actually a pretty decent engagement for a dark, but never underestimate Byzantine fire galleys. They're just insanely strong. So, double bit axe coming in here for both players uh, for the time being. And uh, at the end of the day, it seems like Fish is having a small advantage on water here, but we shouldn't underestimate the fact that we have a 7 Voyager's lead right now for, um, for Dark. And even if he loses the fishing eco, that's going to be potentially at least 4 Voyager's-ish lead. But this is a huge eco lead right now for Dark, who's already walling himself up, so he might be prepared to see his opponent uh, pushing on land. The thing is that it's not really going to happen, because Fish is right now focusing all his efforts on water. There is not a single demo here from either side, as I'm saying that there is a demo on the way from uh, Dark. Gets a pretty nice connection overall, that was a pretty important one. In if you are up against Byzantines with Malay, I think you have to be able to get a couple of good demo hits. Um, Otherwise, you could really be having problems in those. So, uh, it looks like, um, by the way, there is a very, very nice effort from Fish to keep his uh, Fire Galleys alive over here with the low HP ones. Demo diving in over here. Slowly, Dark is taking over on water over here. And Fish has an idle repair voyager over here that hasn't been doing much for recent memory. And in the meanwhile, I would like to point out that the remaining fishing ships for Fish have also been killed. Which means that right now Dark possesses none other but a 12 voyager's lead. That is enormous at this stage of the game. 15 minutes game, 12 voyager's lead. I'm not going to say it's close to GG, but um, technically... Look at this. It's an absolute stomp on water now, because it seems like uh, Dark is going to be easily outnumbering his opponent here. Even though Fish is not giving up on this, but the Repair Voyager is no longer able to help out. And uh, unless there is some good demo connections here for Fish, he's gonna be in trouble. And more importantly, he's not gonna be able to push on land either, because Dark has a nice vault around base. Although there is an opening here. So this has to be walled off as well. Because otherwise, units can run through here on the shallows and just run all the way around. And indeed, it seems like we're going to have archers coming in here from fish already. So he's going to try to make a counterattack happen. But the thing is that with this big eco lead for dark, he can already start considering castle age here, to be honest. And also, he should consider pushing the water, though, because fish is not giving up on this yet. In fact, he seems like he really wants to counterattack this one. As fast as possible. But look at look at Dark's eco. He's got four Vultures queued up here. That's 200 food. He wouldn't really be far away from clicking up. Indeed, now he thinks about... Hey, I could just click up to Castle Age over here. He's playing the water pretty passively. Just pretty much keeping his own fishing eco alive. Doesn't really want to eat some big demo hits. He knows that he has the advantage and he just wants to build on it. I think that's... um admirable decision and remember that uh, it's one thing that he's gonna click up way earlier than his opponent will uh, it is a different thing that um, he's also gonna be even faster up because even if he, they clicked up at the same time he would be up a little faster 
over here. We look at this, 130, and he's gonna be up to Castle Age over here, whereas his opponent is nowhere near close to clicking up to Castle. That being said, the demo is going to try and snipe some fishing ships, connects with one, not really efficient over there, as here comes some demos, that was actually a pretty decent one from Dark, I believe, and as much as he was defeated on water in a previous game, it seems like uh, he is going to have a good water fight over here right now. It was a fairly inefficient demo from Fish over here. I think what matters is that Dark is able to keep his fishing yoke alive, whereas um, Fish was never able to. Also, remember that the Malay will already have extra voyagers because of their fast rage up, which also helps quite immensely. So, there is a range here, but there's absolutely no land unit being made on it. So, the real question is, what is Dark going to do with his early castle age advantage? And I think the only thing I can actually think about right now is War Galley upgrade. Because he wants to win water, and with other sieves, I would say you probably want to push on land. But uh, here with this civilization, Malay, you could really make a case for just securing water and then just going for the infinite fish boom of Malay. The second town center coming in here as well, and even a third town center on the wood, because wood is li a little limited on this map, both so, so it looks like it's just going to be boom from him. He could easily secure water though, but he is playing rather passive over here, whereas Fish is actually willing to play a little bit more aggressive, now piling up resources to go into um, Castle H here. Now, once he gets up to Castle H, he could start punishing with crossbows, and those archers could just find these voyages over here, that would be a disaster for Dark. Uh, Fish, he doesn't see it. Fish is barely missing that, and that hurts so, so much for him, because I think that by the time he turns back, the TC is gonna be up, but there's a hole here. Oh, Dark! Dark! How do you throw away a thousand points lead like that? Like, the thing is that you can make two skirms here to clean this one up, but this is gonna be at least annoying here. Why did you just not re -wall that? You open a hole for your units, and then it's like enemies march in there. Anyways, it looks like Fish has given up on water. He only has one fish or one demo ship in this pond, as he's just picking up the castle age. Like, this 1000 score is completely justified, I think. And this is a game where... Dark should just stomp, to be honest, because uh, I'm not really sure what uh, Fish could do. Fish is gonna get cleaned up, and honestly, now Dark has to think about, okay, I need to go for some land engagements, because he has secured water, he has free TC's boom, he really, start to, he really has to start thinking about, okay, I need to start preparing for a land combat. And honestly, one of the things that I would love to see from him, especially having this much wood in the bank, is sending a couple of voyagers to stone from wood, because in case you get pushed in early castle age, you probably will get pushed by mangonels, um, crossbows, or knights. And if you start stockpiling stone already, you will have a good chance of being able to drop a defensive castle. You know that you have the lead. In fact, look at that. It's almost double the score right now for our Malay player. Uh, so, really... All that could actually go wrong for Dark is that he's getting pushed early Castle Age here with Siege and he could actually start losing Eco, but he's 60 Eco against 37. This isn't even remotely close. And ever since I've started praising uh, the performance of Fish, he has had um, sort of a step back over here. And this is his first home map. Remember that he won Arabia, so if you win Arabia and then you just win all your home maps, you're completely fine. But this is his home map and you would think that he had some sort of game plan here, but it seems like he's getting massively outplayed here. 20 kills for Dark, 9 deaths, and most importantly, look at this eco, 66 to 37. This is not even remotely close. Like, by the time Fish reaches Castle Age over here, his opponent is like, I don't even know when Dark reached Castle. I think it was something like 19 minutes, a 5 minutes difference in Castle Age time, and there's defense feed your chops, sure. But at this point, um, what Dark could do is just actually add fishing ships and go for a fish boom. And uh, behind that one, he's got free TCs. He can actually start picking up relics, for example. I like the way that he's taking the hunt and indeed send voyages to stone. Because you have a commanding position in this game. What you have to make sure is that you don't lose this game on your opponent counterattacking you pretty heavily. And, like, under no condition should Dark lose this game. It's double score. Du Look at this eco difference 74 to 39. It is as if I was playing against the uh, Dark. I don't want to, like, um, be rude to fish whatsoever, but let's be honest, this is almost game over over here. I mean, he will try to catch up, but the thing is that Malay have a very, very nice Arblast and Bombard Cannon power spec, so if fish isn't able to do an insane counterattack here in the upcoming um, 
five-ish minutes until that first castle goes up some round over here, I think it's impossible for uh, Fish to turn, turn this around. Like, Dark would have to make the biggest throw of competitive Asian versus history to lose a game like this. It's 78 Voyagers compared to 43, 20 army compared to 4. There is no army on the field for Fish. There is no water control. There is no eco over here for him. There is absolutely nothing that actually goes um, for him in this game. And if you'll take a look at the food income for Dark, he's actually thinking about imping this one very soon. He could start sending Voyagers to gold and finish the game with Imperial Age, our blessed Bombard Cannon in what could be the most dominant game from Dark so far, because um, up until this point, game number one was pretty much dominated by fish. Game number two was an interesting creature. I like that he's picking off the deer over here, because you take every bit of advantage you can grab, and making sure that your opponent has a little bit less food to work with is always nice. So indeed, Dark uh, is gonna grab Tumbling first, because he's a little low on gold, so... He figures that um, he will need more gold anyways. Might as well get Thumb Ring from the food that he has. Now, he needs to be careful not to lose those crossbows. But once again, Dark has already picked up one relic over here. I guess he's moving out for a second one. Dark is playing this one crystal clear. And uh, really, like, this shouldn't even be a close game, to be honest. Army value is already double. And because, as I said, Dark is very low on gold, he's even delaying his imp here. But... If he had a little bit more Voyagers on gold, he would be going up to Imperial by now. In fact, he would be up to Imperial by now. Now selling the uh, wood. He's got Siege Workshop, he's got um, Monastery, University, so he's got the buildings. And with Malay, it doesn't really take a lot of time for him to go up into Imperial. So, uh, in one and a half minutes, he will be an Imp. He will have Arblast and Bracer with 100 Voyagers compared to 60 from his opponent. He's gonna have pretty decent map vision as well, so he's picking uh, or dropping outposts over here. Really, this is very well played right now by Dark. Let's see if he's actually going to eat a big mango shot. Nice split from him. I don't think that he should take this fight, though. He isn't really forced to take this fight, that's the thing. I don't like that he's taking this at all. He's going to take these units down, but he could have just waited until he gets into Imperial. But uh, he's going to flash some of his micro... Look at this. This guy is 16 years old. Imagine what this guy is going to be in two or three years um, of competitive age vampires. Elite skirm? Now that's that. No, 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 my friend. No elite skirm, Reno here. Why is he making elite skirm? I think he might be afraid that his opponent is also imping. I don't think that he understands how much ahead he is. If he knew he was this much ahead, he would just go full Arbalest. Also, you don't really want to go for um, skirmishers against uh, Byzantines anyways. So I don't know why he's going for elite skirms. I feel like his lead is big enough that uh, he should have no trouble winning this game, even with elite skirms. That's going to be a forward castle, by the way, from him. So he's not even going to go for a defensive cast. It's a forward castle. And the fish is going to get pushed away from that stone. Imperial Age is in. Fish still far away from Imperial, although he's got cheaper Imperial Age, you remember that, with Byzantines, but still he's gonna have to wait the 4 minutes, or not 4 minutes, it's 3 minutes. I always confuse those numbers, but it's only 3 minutes, and yeah, Fish just calls the GG. In what was one of the most one-sided games I have seen, and it's actually very interesting that the first two games are very competitive, and both players actually played really well, and in this one, it kind of felt like Fish just try to play standard, but get massively outplayed by Dark. I feel like the fact that Fish never actually were able to um, kill the Fishing Eco from Dark is huge. Fish lost his Fishing Eco at the beginning of the water fights, whereas Dark was able to fish all the time. Even when Fish had the upper hand in terms of Fire Guy numbers, Dark was able to preserve his Fishing Ship numbers, and that actually helped a lot, because that is what propelled him to better cast leech time, a much better cast leech time to be precise, allowed him to go for free TCs and just flat out outboom his opponent. This is also made sure that uh, even any archer counterattack won't really kill a lot of Voyagers, and uh, indeed, upon Dark reaching Imperial Age, Fish taps out, and that is a 2-1 to -one lead now for uh, Dark. So after losing the first game, um, he is uh, winning two with the first two Civilization pick that he has had, a high Byzantine pick over there from uh, Fish, but he wasn't really able to capitalize on those Byzantines, it seems like. So with that, we are uh, gonna jump into the next game over here, which is going to be on the home map of Fish, his second home map to be precise which is Gold Rush. So for Gold Rush, 
he has Berbers, I think that's going to be a Berbers pick over there. And uh, for the final map cross, I would think you pick just Persians. And Chinese would be left out of the party, believe it or not. I think um, Fish expected Chinese or Franks to be sniped. And that's why he picked two civilizations. Because both of those are basically Arabian civilizations with the current map pool. And that's probably the reason why you see those two civs. And that is the reason why Chinese, which is generally a very, very good um, civilization in uh, 1v1, is potentially going to go unused. So we're going into Gold Rush over here. On the other side, we will have a Saracen pick over here, somewhat surprisingly. As uh, we are going to welcome Fish on the right side in blue as Berber's left side is going to be Dark playing in Teal as Saracens with what is a well vulnerable map on the left side, to be honest. Vo here, and Vo here would secure the stone and gold in the woodland at the back. The right side is a little bit more open, so I'm not sure how he's going to secure the other gold mine for himself. Although, I think his primary gold is very, very safe, and that's already a nice advantage. Over there, other side, Fish House is a very good uh, map, to be honest. Easy wall-offs, basically all across his base, and relatively safe resources all around as well. This stone is pretty bad, so you kind of have to protect this stone mine, because eventually you are probably planning on uh, going for camel archers. So this is one of those matchups where... Uh, we could see double scouts, we could see double archers, we could see fast castles from both sides. So really, everything is possible in this civilization matchup. One thing is sure, if you're seeing archer versus archer fights um, in Castle Age, that's actually better than for the Saracen player. Because he can actually get arms in Imperial, whereas uh, the Berber player, if he has a lot of crossbows, he won't be able to use them in Imperial because he has not all oh, blast. So that's something to consider. Um, on the other hand... Um, the verbal player has to be very, very careful with the Saracen market use. As Dark is doing some heavy, heavy scouting around the opponent's base over here. Looks at the Voyager and doesn't decide to attack, interestingly. Um, Fish already is starting to wall himself up. Dark is almost fully walled by now. And here comes uh, what is going to be a drush from Dark. In the game number one, he actually went for a two militia drush, and that seems like it's the case here as well. But he just bumps into lions here, so you really have to question if this was actually something that uh, he... I don't know what he was planning. He's actually killing the lions here, so I don't think that he was planning on bumping into the wolves. Sometimes you just intentionally bring in a militia and try to just bring the wolves to the opponent's base. I don't think that was the intention here. Although I feel like just bringing one militia and bringing four wolves would have actually done more damage than... Uh, two militias over here so it seems like dark is not really willing to commit to free militia rushes just go for two and we'll try something very similar to um what uh, he actually did in the first game so one thing that i would like to add this is an extremely important fact i was looking at this in the mining camp while we were waiting uh, yeah, so the militias will break in. So what you have seen is that the voyagers that uh, were on food and hunt actually started making the mining camp. And you could be screaming in yourself, hey, if I change the type of worker I have, so if I change a hunter to a gold miner, as you have a little bit of an efficient rush over here, fish is going to have to evacuate the woodland for a brief moment. So if I change um, the hunter to a gold miner, I'm going to lose the food on it once it actually starts gathering gold, right? So how is it possible that he's still making the mining camp on it without actually force dropping the food on the town center? It is actually happening because whatever drop of building you're making, when you actually finish constructing that building, it acts as a single time drop off point for any source of resources. So um, if you can actually, or if you want, you can actually go back and check out how the food count for dark jump by 100 when he finished that mining camp and that is because um that mining camp acts as a drop-off point for the food as well when it's finished it will no longer act after it actually is finished constructing but um if multiple villagers that are having any type of resource are uh, constructing um that mining camp then they will actually drop off the resources at that mining camp uh, and you will get the entire package of resources yourself um, when they finish that mining camp. I think something similar is done as well with farms. So I think back in the days I have seen players like, um, for example, 
whenever you had to drop off a little bit for resources uh, for whatever reason um could actually be a thing in nomad maybe haven't seen that for a while and i wouldn't even be able to bring you a perfect example on one that is needed but sometimes you can actually drop off resources by making a farm as well anyways uh we are gonna have uh what is basically a Saracen market use a fast castle over here. Something that has been pretty common in the tournament, even though the 29 Voyagers, um, the Rush FC here, is not something that's extraordinary, to be honest, for Saracens. This is more about, yes, yeah, Saracens sold their resources, but the only reason why they had to is because they generally have a pretty bad economy. So, the thing is that uh, 29 Voyagers isn't an impressive... Uh, well, it's 29 with uh, 29 with the plus 2 in Feudal, though. So that was 27 Drush FC. That's still borderline. But yeah, with Saracen's Eco, you probably want 28, 29 plus 2. And you can compensate a faster up with a market here. So we're going to have double ranges over here for crossbows. Other side, it looks like uh, Fish initially vote himself up over here. And I think he, for a moment he had plans to add some other woes. Or I might have been just blind. I don't know. And that is going to be Blacksmith for his stable here. So, he went for Scouts, but they weren't able to do much. Honestly, Scouts on this map won't do much for you. So, the thing is that your opponent usually has a volleyball enough base to be able to hold on against Scouts. Now, the thing is that uh, we're going to see Dark adding Voice to Stone. And it seems like what he could actually play for is a Saracen, Odin, Castle Age, Crossbow, potentially Siege push over here. Obviously, that's not really sustainable, but um, especially on a map that has a lot of gold, you can actually abuse the market a little bit more than you would be able to on a map like Arabia. Like, on Arabia, you don't want to just spend all your gold buying food. Uh, it is much easier to be done on a map that has, like, an awful lot of gold. In fact, how much gold... How, how many gold do we have over here? More than 60 tiles of gold. Each tile is, like, 800 gold, so this is uh, already... 48,000 gold and I think there is at least 60 more tiles so there's about 100,000 gold in the middle of the map right now crossbows now coming out and uh, the problem that dark is facing is that by the time he's gonna get here fish is gonna be up to castle age as well and he's gonna have cheap berber knights and uh, the berber eco is a little bit stronger than the saracen eco overall and the cheap berber knights can easily overrun the map uh, over here uh, let's see that this is intentional from Dark. This is the Wolf Rush I was referring to. Nice and comfy, collecting all of the lions. Um, as long as one lion is in the line of sight of the Spearman, all of the lions will follow. So even though this guy over here is very, very far away and would normally de-aggro, it's not going to de-aggro. Uh, and I think he's actually bringing the lions over here to prevent his opponent from... Oh no, he's actually going for the gates. Other option would have been to bring the lions here in case um, Fish actually wants to, you know, um, drop a TC or drop a Siege Workshop whatsoever. He's, is he collecting even more? So as I said, as long as um, the Spearman is in the line of sight of just a single lion, all of them will follow because Gaia units share line of sight. So you see, even though these are very, very far away and normally would de-aggro, um, they will follow until there is at least uh, one Gaia unit that has line of sight on it. And birds like this also has, or also are, um, considered guy units. And at the end of the day, the scouts will just finish this one off. But that means there's like a lot of lions over here. This could be problematic for fish if he actually wants to place a TC here and he's not paying attention. Not really a big deal if he does pay attention because one or two knights can deal with this one easily. But if he just sends out voyagers and accidentally doesn't pay attention, he could lose a lot of those. Like, eight lions is no joke. Anyways... We're gonna have knights coming in here for fish, as Dark actually ventures into his base for a moment, took down a house, threw the wall, picked off his farm, but that, but that was basically all that he did. And now, he's gonna retreat. So the thing is that um, Saracen camels are better than Berber camels, but Berber camels are much cheaper. So, considering the fact that Dark is pretty much playing, I'm not going to say an all-in strategy, especially because now he's adding TC number 2, but he's definitely playing more aggressive strategy. I don't think that he's going to have the resources available to make a tech switch into uh, camo play early on. So that could be troublesome from the aspect that he's already up against a lot of knights. And really, 
Berberus can sustain that knight production very, very easily. And here come the villagers. Let's see if those... Uh, I think the knights will trigger the Aleph Alliance. No, they won't. And it seems like Fish will want a siege workshop on top of this hill. I think the ideal plan for Dark would have been to collect the lions and then delete the spearmen in the middle of this map. Because that would have made it much, much more annoying for Fish to get the siege workshop up in there. But anyways... For well, now, that's quite a lot of crossbows over here with heal advantage. No ballistics right now. Instead, uh, Dark went for a second TC. And now he's adding camels. So, the thing is that crossbow camel is something I like more than knight camel. But when there is knight and uh, potentially camel, potentially mangonel, that's actually a very, very nice uh, composition over here. Scorpion on the way for fish. So... Here come the lions, and yeah, eventually you will just clean them up over here. Knights are good enough to clean them up pretty easily. But imagine if these were villagers, this would be a completely different scenario. One or two villagers could easily die to lions. I have seen I have seen wolf rushes like that. In this map, it's lions because this is a desert team map in this tournament. But if this was like a Europe themed or uh, like a Southeast Asia team map, it would be tigers and uh, wolves whatsoever. Anyways, there is a couple of camels over here, knights, coming out already. And there isn't really a lot of camels to act as a meat shield. But still, that's quite a lot of crossbows. Camels are around as well. And the camels could go for the scorpions here, although the knights are getting good around. And remember, in 2v2 World Cup, one of the best civilizations for Golden Pit was Berbers. And you see why. The cheap knights actually give you an enormous power spike and allow you to secure a foothold in the middle. And even the camels are doing a nice job... Picking off the scorpions, now the crossbows are going down and now they're fighting up hills and the knights from fish are actually fighting down hills and he's taking some very very cost efficient engagements over here at the end of the day. He's getting cleaned up but considering the price of those knights I think this was an absolute win for him because he killed a lot of those uh, crossbows and he could add the third stable pretty soon over here because he could easily afford training knights on free stables. It seems like there is going to be uh, another TC coming up and there is the third stable from Dark, whereas the answer from that, or from Dark, is going to be a monastery for that. The problem that he's facing is that he's soon going to have to move to the other gold mine he has, and that's a little bit unprotected. He's still getting ballistics over here as he's hoping to melt that siege workshop, and uh, he will actually. That siege workshop is likely going down over here, unless the knights arrive, and those knights will have the hill advantage, although now there is a couple of camels as well. I think this is something that uh, Dark could potentially try and fight, and indeed he will. He's trying to move away so that his opponent isn't getting um, the hill advantage. Another Scorpion is on the way, but the Siege Workshop is dropping in HP really fast. And for now, Fish is just trying to scare away Dark from here so that he can actually get a Scorpion in for himself. Anyways, um, there is going to be Monks as well eventually, but as I said, Dark Seek isn't going to be that great, although is it? Considering the fact that he's playing um, Saracens, this is actually a pretty decent eco. 60 Voyagers over 51, he actually has the eco lead over his opponent, even though um, there is Wheelbarrow for fish, which means that uh, it is actually just uh, an 11, well not 11, but 8 Voyagers lead for um, Dark over here. And Dark now transitioning into Camels. Now, with an eco like this, he can definitely afford Camels, um, but soon he's going to have to think about uh, moving to the middle and getting a castle up himself on one of the gold mines. I think... A similar plan has to be on the mind of uh, Fish as well, who is still just going for four knights over here. And um, with that, that uh, siege workshop I think is now going down. The scorpions will unpop, but the camels can actually finish them off pretty easily. In fact, camels could finish off the knights as well. So this is probably a dead siege workshop. Knights trying to loop around from the back as the defense upgrade is just coming. That's the first upgrade that Dark is getting on his camel. So there was absolutely no upgrades. On those guys, and the scorpions actually did a really nice job helping out the knights over here deal with the, the camels. And uh, Dark's army is still bigger, but the army value is greater for fish. And remember that there is not really a lot of camels, and those don't have good upgrades here. So no bloodlines, only plus one defense, really very, very little upgrades 
for those camels over here and those berber knights will actually be a pretty cost efficient solution to dealing with the crossbows it seems like the converted knight and this camels will go for the scorpion the scorpion gets some nice hits over here as well and dark is losing army faster than he can actually replenish it he's trying to transition to camels here but he might just get overrun by the cheap berber knights before he's able to make that tech switch and indeed all the crossbows are down dark is down to two military and even though he has a 10 voyagers lead and he's trying to get into camels now the problem here for him is that fish can just go for a cheaper camels of berbers and he will just be able to outnumber his opponent flat out also these are plus two plus two knights so um fish would have plus two plus two camels as well as uh, he's even able to deny this stable over here it's only two stables for dark and there is three already for fish it seems like we're getting closer and closer to going into a game number five over here in this series i think fish has actually recovered a little bit compared to the previous game and the islands game because this one game is definitely cleaner uh, from him than uh, the previous ones were so quick was over there from uh, dark uh, monk is actually gonna get a conversion over here dark will try to commit and at least pick off the monk over here there's more and more camels in here and this is the moment where if you are fish you're actually going to start making camels yourself because your camels will just be better simply so you can just make your own camels as dark is trying to get bloodlines for himself he's stuck on two stables right now and he's not adding any more behind uh, actually he has one more over here at the back and he's also low on gold now let's take a look at fish's pov fish knows about that gold mine i think fish should know based on the fact that he's running out of gold back at home from the first gold mine you see he's running out of gold back at home from the first gold mine if you do that your opponent is probably also running out of his own um gold mine back at home so if um fish actually looks at that he might um see that hey my opponent is likely running out of his gold mine and i could just send a couple of knights to this gold mine and uh, try to get a couple of voyager picks still just four knights though from fish which is something i really don't like like the thing is that he's got pretty decent upgrades to compensate for the fact that he's fighting against camels with knights but I feel like if he just started mixing in his own knights, he would just win flat out because he would be able to outnumber his opponent with cheap Berber knights that even have uh, better upgrades on them. Still, look at that. Knights are actually chasing down those camels over there. And it's still 28 army against 7. Now, Fish is on stone. And we have seen how the first game developed. He went for a very, very aggressive castle. Here, in this case, a castle here would be an absolute disaster for Dark because it would cut him off from all accessible gold and it would probably even deny this stone mine over here. As now it's battering grams on the way as well. Monastery is going down pretty hard. And uh, obviously Fish is prioritizing that to prevent um, his knights from being converted. Camels did loop all the way around. I think they killed most of the knights that were chasing them as well. Still, I don't know why. But Fish is only playing knights exclusively. Now if he loses this game, he's going to lose this game because he's playing knights. If he actually just made camels, yeah, camels aren't that great at killing voyagers, but it doesn't matter because it beats your opponent's army and then you can kill the voyagers with the camels. It's it's a slower process to kill voyagers with camels, but it works, right? So I feel like um, I massively disagree with the decision to go for um, just four knights over here because now those camels are starting to get scary. So just plus one defense, but they do have um, bloodlines. And remember, Saracen camels also get 10 extra HP. So... At the end of the day, those are actually starting to be a little bit scary. And did I mention that I think that um, Fish should be making camels? But he is uh, not making... Okay, now he's adding camels. That's a little too late as a decision for him. Still, eco-wise, he's actually having a big eco advantage right now, though. And the, the clock is ticking for Dark as well. Dark is going to have a lot of camels here, though. And he might actually try taking a decisive engagement. Dark, I think, has run out of the stone. No, he didn't run out of stone here. He's just not mining any, which means that even if he takes this hill, it's not like he can secure that with a castle immediately. That's the problem that Dark is facing. It's one thing that you win a fight. It's another that you actually secure map control. And your opponent now has a much, much better eco than you do. And he's got all the gold in the world. Plus two, plus two camels with 120 HP. It's still better. And so Dark is trying to grab... Uh, Plus one attack over here to try and fight uphills. But that gold mine is going dangerously low here. Dark is out of gold and this gold mine has uh, about a thousand gold left in there. More like a thousand and a half. A little bit less than that. Still, camel number wise we have 12 camels against 31 camels. That's a lot of camels over here. Dark also balancing out his eco pretty heavily over here for gold. Gold prices are still pretty decent over here. 
and now it looks like fish will try to take this hill over here he has the extra attack uh he has the extra defense and he also has the hill over here for himself and uh as i said in the previous game fish actually went for very very aggressive plays and i think that's the perfect castle that you can actually make in this situation maybe a couple tiles closer to that stone would have been better so like at the edge here but this is still a very very good castle because if you take a look at this town center position this castle position this is pretty much cutting off a dark from all accessible gold and unless dark is sneaking villagers all the way around here to the here it's going to be almost impossible for dark to get gold in fact if you take a look at the vision of fish on the gold in the middle he actually has very very good vision he should get one outpost here and he would be able to see if uh, Dark even attempts to go for the middle. Against a massive force of camels like that, camel archers can also be an absolutely reasonable unit for fish. For now, he just has monks, his own camels. 44 camels against 30 camels over here and we have a big, big, big camel clash. I think this is not a good fight for fish, by the way. This is actually a very bad fight for him. Although he's got the better um, upgrades on those camels though the hp is slightly higher for dark scamo so indeed it feels like it's not going to be enough for fish to edge out a decisive victory score is just changing very very fast over here as the units are dying left and right and it seems like the plus two plus two is worth more than the extra 10 hp on those camels as dark is losing his entire army and indeed he taps out he was trying to get iron casting game, but that was way too late and uh, fish evens this one out here and we're going to the cider game to the final home map of uh, dark over here right it's it was dark's home map yeah it's gonna be dark's home map so saracens are gone over here for dark loses that and the berbers are uh, gone as well for fish surprising is the fact that fish actually won two games and both of those were with saves that he picked last. So the final game is going to be four lakes or cross. Dark Haze left with Persians and Chinese. Both of these saves are good for cross. But I feel like um, Persians will probably be a little bit better. Because they're just a better hybrid save overall. Other side I think it's pretty straightforward. It's a Lithuanians play. So Lithuanians versus Persians. Britons will be a massive surprise. And it seems like we are not going to get surprised over here because indeed it's a Persians versus Lithuanians game. Welcome to Four Lakes in a map script where uh, the players seem to spawn very, very close to each other over here, somewhat surprisingly. They're super close. Look at this. Right side is going to be dark in teal. Left side is going to be um, fish in blue. But the two players are so, so close to each other that um, some early aggression could really start knocking out villagers. So the reason why I picked Lithuanians here is because you could go for a fast dog, but fish is not going for that. And something I noticed with fish on the islands game is that he didn't build Phytorias. And I feel like, um, as I said, I don't know much about fish as a player, but it feels like he is not using these new civilizations or sort of new civilizations or uh, features that weren't that common in competitive play long time ago, like Phaetorias on islands or Lithuanian fast dock strategy. He's not using that to perfection. So this is still a standard dock timing with Lithuanians here. But the reason why I pick Lithuanians here is to go for a fast dock, because that's exactly what gives you the advantage over the opponent. And if you don't go for the fast dock, then your opponent is just going to have a much, much better uh, start than you with Persians. And indeed, that's the case. Dark is already at 20 Voyagers, 21 now. So you see that there is like a at least one and a half Voyagers lead in the favor of uh, Dark over here. That's coming from the faster working TC, faster working dock over here. Whereas for Fish, he was just playing a very, very standard um, hybrid map civilization play here. But as I said... He didn't use Lithuanians to perfection, and uh, that's something that I criticized as well on the Islands game, that um, the Phaetorias, especially on such a long game, could have been something to consider. Anyways, um, we are going to have a few Lich coming in here for both players, slightly better for Fish, as both players will wall themselves off. Now, the thing is that um, Dark, if he walls himself off in a reasonable manner, he's walling himself off right now, like here. But he's going for the gold mine over here. Honestly, yeah, he's gonna wall like this. And this wall is gonna be completely useless. I think he might even delete this and just place it over here on the front. Which would be a much, much better wall um, for him. It seems like he might still finish this. But in that case, you kind of have to make some walls over here. So I'm not sure if these walls are really necessary right now for uh, Dark. Anyways, Fish is up and uh, a little bit late with the barracks. I think he wants to play scouts here based on the amount of food that he has in the bank. And... Uh, he also 
um, does kill the scout of Dark. Dark actually tried to sneak a Voyager um, on the opponent over here. Actually, what am I talking about? Holy smokes, I'm just noticing I was looking at the wrong person. Obviously, Fish didn't go for a fast dock because he's not playing Lithuanians. Oh, man. I apologize. It has been a lot of series I had to cast, so it seems like I've lost focus by the end, especially because this is also a very, very long one. Obviously, I was looking at it and he's like, he's not going for the fast dock. Obviously, he's not going for it because he's Persians. So... Dark probably went for a fast dock strategy over here, we didn't actually take a look at that. But he's the Lithuanian's player on the right, and Persians on the left for fish. I'm not even sure if I introduced the, the players properly here. I think after I'm done casting all the Hidden Cup Qualifier series, I will probably need to take a like, couple of days break, because apparently I'm suffering from a mental breakdown over here very soon from all this casting. Screwing up confusing civilizations. Now that's actually a pretty long and ugly wall for fish over here. Uh, walling off like 25% of the map. In this one, we already have scouts on the way for fish. Um, walls are up for dark, but it, this lady actually walled herself on the outside. And for whatever reason, this is actually a stone wall over here. And the rest of the wall is polyside. That's minus one voyager over there for dark. So... Dark actually wanted to go for uh, another pond over here, but that Voyager is going to get intercepted. Fish is going to take the lady down indeed. And this is actually still open here. So this is still problematic for Dark. Um, he could have just tried voling over here instead. Here comes the Spearman. Uh, Fish just runs past it, even though the Voyager is, or the Scout is going to get poked down. And uh, it seems like I think... Dark is gonna have enough time to get these walls up, just in time. Uh, it also seems like Fish is going to move out to grab the other pawn on the left. Eco count is right now pretty close. And the thing is that Fish is actually playing um, pretty aggressive here, whereas Dark is playing a lot more defensive, just like in the first game. So there will be military from Dark over here, but it's not like he's actually flooding out scouts or uh, what. Final second reaction over there from Dark to actually build that house before it runs out of HP. And uh, for the time being, it seems like we are going to have a pretty early castlage coming in here for Dark. So he's trying to capitalize on the earlier castlage. Gets a couple of scouts out, but look at those resources. He's not willing to commit a lot to that. He committed a lot to walling, but uh, in exchange... He is not really spending um, a lot of resources on scouts. In fact, he just went for two scouts. And the reason why I go for two scouts here is because you just want to intercept the Voyager here on the left. And two scouts would kill a Voyager very, very easily. And uh, you would still have a lot of HP on left on them. You could just make one scout. But then the Voyager fights it. The scout goes down to half HP and the next Voyager could kill that scout most likely. If you have two scouts, um, unless your opponent drags a Spearman there or at least one or two scouts, he's not going to be able to uh, clean that one up over there. Slightly unbalanced eco over here for Dark Wamin and also the fact that he's idling his TC that um, he's trying to go up into Castage over here but he's just not having the food for it. Now he's going to click up. He's floating a lot of wood though. So that's going to be enough for a second stable and potentially two more TCs even. Uh, I think the Voyager here may have been intercepted. Nope. There is no Voyagers killed by Dark, so he didn't actually kill this Voyager. There is uh, a Voyager coming in here from Dark getting a dock up on that pond. So both players will be having um, one guaranteed safe pond that's going to be completely untouched. And there is also going to be one pond that could be contested by the opponent. Now, Dark is actually pretty close to two relics over here. And he also has uh, one relic that he could actually get from uh, this lake over here. Obviously, he needs a transport ship for that, but um, it is very, very likely that with Lithuanians, we're going to see him trying to expand towards those a little bit earlier, and he's going to have a one-minute advantage going into Castlage over uh, Fish. Fish is actually going to have to play with uh, Camels, though, because he's going to get beaten to Castlage, which means that uh, he's not going to be able to catch up in night numbers, so he has to open Camels, at least. Anyways, there's a Galley coming in. That's something I really like. A Galley will deny um, Dark from adding a dock up here, plus one defense coming in here for um, Fish, and Dark is actually going for Bloodlines first. And I would think that Dark also wants to go for a galley over here to prevent his opponent from uh, hitting that Fishing Eco. Anyways, Lithuanian Spearman coming in here as well. It's not impossible that we're going to see a Knight and Pike push from our Lithuanian player over here. Ecos are relatively close. Um, although it seems like Dark has a slight eco lead because uh, 
it will still take 45 seconds until fish actually reaches uh, castle age although there is no wheelbarrow for dark so that compensates completely there's an early monastery over here and uh no knights okay now there is knights so it was just a little bit of a delay here from dark who is running out of deep fish on his original pond so he's gonna have to add a lot of fish traps very very soon something that he's going to spend a lot of wood on and uh fish will actually see there is a dock over here so i wonder if he's going to send a villager to try and get a dock up there it seems unlikely as uh, dark is trying to bash his way through his walls on the left side In the meanwhile, we will have uh, knights out already, and there was an attempted forward siege workshop by Dark, but that's gonna be a failure. Scouts pick off that voyager, and these knights won't have any up any upgrades on them other than bloodlines. So no blacksmith upgrades on these guys, no attack, no defense upgrades, whereas if you take a look at Fish's knights, he's gonna have bloodlines, he's gonna have plus two defense, so in quality those knights are much, much better, but it seems like there will be a lot of spearmen supporting this one for Dark, alongside monks. In this case, I could even see a pike and siege push uh, being a reality here. Because normally I'm not a fan of pike and siege push on a map that is open like cross and... Uh, yeah, if you're too far apart from your opponent. But here you're so, so close to your opponent that you could really justify going for an early pikeman switch. Because the thing is that Fish isn't really going to be able to use his mobility because you are fully void. And you're so, so close to him that you can just spam pikeman into his face and indeed... Pikeman and Ram coming in here, a Voyager may even get converted, but even if it doesn't, it is going to prevent repairs over here. Knights looping around, trying to snipe the Monk over here. Monk is gonna go down, but there was one conversion coming in here for a Dark. Dark's fishing eco, as I said, is going to be something that he needs to address very, very soon. Knights running into the Pikeman over here. Obviously, the mobility of the Lithuanian Pikeman also helps immensely over here, as we have another conversion, and... The fish is down to six military. This is the decider game. So whoever loses this one is out of the tournament. Whoever wins will get into the next round. Another monastery coming out over here. And that means that we're gonna have a double monastery monk, spike man knights, and potentially rams coming in here. Fish is actually trying to react with some stone walls behind and coming in with a couple of scorpions. So you should see a mangonel soon from dark. For now, he's going to just garrison his uh Pikeman inside the rams and just start taking down the barracks over there. Eco-wise, Dark has a 7 Voyager's lead right now, as he already has quite decent fishing eco set up on the second pond. So does uh, Fish. Fish is also starting to run out of deep fish on his own pond. Dark, however, has already consumed it, so he's gonna have to start adding fish traps ASAP, otherwise his food eco could be in trouble. Once again, uh, Fish adding uh, stone walls behind to... You know, just prevent those rams from breaking in there. And now that there is a mangonel, I think the only way the dark is getting through those walls is if, if he's bringing in his own mangonel as well. So here comes the mangonel. Alternative would be redemption monks. But I think I like what I'm seeing from dark. He's saying, okay, whatever, you are sitting inside your own base behind stone walls. I'm just going to do what Lithuanians do best. Start picking up relics. And I'm just gonna steamroll you with my plus um, 1 million knights, basically. In fact, he's going to uh, loop all the way around with the knights here. And most likely may be even hitting this part of the wall over here. As uh, there is going to be knights that will probably intercept a villager. There is still no dock from Dark on that pond, though. Knights moving out as well from Fish over here, as we have the first relic coming in from Dark right now, second as well. He didn't actually take this relic right now, but he already has a transport ship to do that. So the monk is going for that, and I think that um, Dark is gonna have a lot of relics pretty soon over here, which isn't just a small thing because of the... well, it's not really a small thing at all. Um, it's not just benefiting you from the uh, knights. It also benefits you from gold income, so having four or five relics actually is a pretty reliable gold income for you. And now, there is a couple of knights out for fish, but it is still double the army for Dark. Dark has a 16 villagers lead, and uh, in the decider game, it is looking much, much better for him. Now there is a couple of monks defending against those knights, but as I said, um, Dark is now trying to get the techs in. Scalebarring on the way, and he's grabbing the relic from that position as well. He will be on three relics at minimum. Now knights, 
getting through the quick wars over here, apparently Fish wasn't able to finish this quick gate and loses two villagers in the process. That gate is gonna go down really fast to the knights as well. The pawns are still intact for both players, as uh, now Fish is trying to convert those knights, and that's going to be a little bit troublesome for Dark trying to escape. And uh, I think he will soon launch an offensive with the Mangonels and the Pikemen. He might be waiting for some more relics to arrive as he's also focusing on, uh, you know, expanding his uh, fishing eco over here with the fish traps. Now takes the hill, he's got plus two attack, plus one defense, whereas the opponent has plus one, plus two. So these knights are relatively even over here. But in reality, the difference is that uh, Darek um, does have... Uh, the relic bonus and that's why he's getting a plus two attack and not because of upgrades that would be huge though if you can actually pick off the mangonel and the thing is that um fish is relying very heavily on monks and being able to convert those knights but monks are slow moving and i think dark has done an excellent job just running around with the knights and making sure the monks do chase and it seems like he finds an opening on the base of the opponent and now the pikemen are flooding inside that's like what 10 15 pikemen very soon mangonel cups comes in to start hitting the gold miners and that's going to be extremely tough to fight for um fish because there's a lot of Lithuanian pikemen it's easy to maneuver them because they're very fast moving there isn't really a lot of upgrades on them but now dark is moving in 24 voyagers lead and it seems like fish who was so so dominant in the first game um fish who was so so dominant in the gold rush game is going to be in a very very tough spot over here if not borderline in a position in which he is close to losing. Both players are actually having resources piled up for Imperial, but the Imperial Age should also be much, much better for Dark. In fact, his eco balance isn't really perfect here. Nice micro hover from him as uh, he finishes off the Knights. Mangonel does go down, but it is 24 army compared to 901 Voyagers. And I feel like when this fight is over, Dark will just balance at eco. Look at that 1900 food. And indeed, now he's just going to buy himself up to Imperial here. <laughs> without any problems and I think he's just going to switch back into Cavalier at that time because uh, he has done enough with the pikemen and he's got an awful lot of relics uh, he's got two relics over here in this one and I think this monk hasn't even brought in the third one and I think Dark might even see this relic over here nope he doesn't see the rest of the relics which is a little bit unfortunate for him but it's still free relics now and you know what Lithuanian knights do with free relics it's also 24 Voyager's lead, and it seemed like Fish just invests his resources into Knights. I feel like this could end up being an Imp GG here. Two and a half minutes away from Imp is Dark, as he gets another conversion over here. Um, what a conversion overall. But here's the Knights, and like Fish is really trying to revoil this one, but there's just more and more Knights flooding in, and it's 10 plus 4 attack already, and... These guys don't even have good upgrades. Imagine what would happen if Dark actually upgraded his units and not just, you know, use the relics. As more and more Vultures are going down, there's still 86 for Fish, but the problem is that um, he's struggling to plug this leak in here, and as I said, um, by the time he's able to stabilize, his opponent is gonna be in Imperial, and indeed there is more stables, because this is where you're saying, okay, it's time to go, I have the relics, I have the knights, I just want to get a couple of upgrades and I will just finish you off with uh, the Cavalier. And look at this, the Knights are still doing so much damage. It's 14 Voyagers killed by Dark, only 2 by Fish. And I think one of that was a Docking Voyager down south and one of them was uh, a Siege Workshop Trap Voyager in the front. Never in this entire game was Fish even remotely close to hitting uh, the economy of Dark. He never got into his base with scouts, he never was able to um, push the pond with uh, fire galleys, he never actually was able to push uh, the eco of his opponent overall, and that I think starts to show, as uh, now Dark is actually in here, and remember that the fact that these knights actually got inside was huge, because that allows um, Dark to start wreaking havoc over here, and preventing these revolves, and now it's knights flooding all over the place, I feel like this is going nowhere for Fish, and once he's the Cavalier, he might just tap out in what is going to be a heartbreaking loss for him, because really, based on the performance that we have had for these two players, I feel like both of these players would have deserved to um, win this set. In the first and the fourth game, um, Fish was much, much more dominant than Dark. In the second and the third game, um, Dark was uh, a lot more confident than Fish. I think the B game, um, Dark... Uh, did excellent like he absolutely stomped 
um, his opponent over there. And uh, you really have to go back to the islands game, which could have gone differently for Fish. Like, he actually had water control over there, um, but he never really got anything out of that. So never really got the neutral islands, never really got uh, potentially a couple of Fatorias while he had the advantage and while he could afford it. Um to potentially prepare himself for a very, very late game, and eventually just ran out of resources and got overrun by the opponent. Still, a uh, solid member in the next round, uh, Dark is uh, getting a chance to play in the round of Suri 2, um, as once again, he has been one of the most improved players of recent memory, he's still really young, really talented, and you see the potential in him as well, because he's playing clean, so if you just look at this 10 minutes TC idle time at this stage of the game, is actually very nice, the unit control is nice, uh, there is still some um, sloppy moves, especially in terms of water combat, like, he needs to clean up his uh, um, sh game against demo ships, for example, but all in all, I think he's really showing why people are saying that he has improved a lot and uh, he has a lot of potential in him. And really, I'm looking forward to Salts as a team with Winchester, Classic Pro and Dark on how they could perform in uh, potential future team game events. With that, I'm going to thank you for watching this um, kind of amazing series over here. I will have, I think, three more uh, round of 64 games or series left to cast and then um obviously as the round of story 2 is happening you might have seen some of the videos already out on my youtube um as those are happening i will be uploading those as well alongside um everything else that's coming from hidden cups so all qualifiers um all main event games whatever thank you so much for watching and uh, hopefully we'll meet again in a future video